Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace 
through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's judgment, justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Well, welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace where all are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. I'd like just to give you all a heads up about what's coming up in this new year. This Tuesday, January 12th at 6 o'clock, our new Bible study, The Old Testament in Seven Sentences, will be starting on Zoom. This study will explore the overall narrative and the story of the Old Testament and how it points us towards Christ. Please RSVP on our website, aplc.org, if you're interested in joining us for this study. Our next quarterly blood drive will take place on Sunday, January 31st from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. This is a great opportunity to serve our neighbors. These donations are incredibly valuable and provide a life-saving resource for our neighbor. If you would like to donate, please go ahead and schedule an appointment on our website. Again, it's aplc.org. And finally, as Martin Luther King Jr. Day is approaching, we're in the midst of planning a virtual March event. So please keep an eye out for more information about this opportunity coming up in the next days and weeks. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. A reading from Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light 
from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Word of God, word of life. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as King forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Word of God, word of life. Well, hi, everyone. I brought something from home today, and I want to show you. Uh, it's this right here. It's my bird feeder that I recently got. And you can see I've got it. It's all filled up with bird seed. And um, what you do with bird feeder, you, you can put them outside, like on a tree or on a post or, or on a fence or something. And, and if you're lucky, you'll get all sorts of visiting birds. They'll come by, like robins and cardinals or finches and and they'll, they'll uh, just get a snack from the bird seed on the inside here. And um, I brought this to show it to you today because in the sermon that I'm about to preach, we're going to be talking about all sorts of birds today. And um, it's because in the, the gospel reading, we hear that the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove during his baptism when he was being baptized. And he, the Spirit didn't come down like a dove because Jesus... Uh, had bird seed for it or anything like that. That's not what happened. But, but the Spirit came down like a dove to show everyone that Jesus is the Son of God and that he brings us peace and forgiveness. And that's what the Spirit is telling us. So maybe next time you're outside, if you see a bird, uh, if you have a bird feeder at home or just see a bird outside, you can be reminded of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is always with us and you know, reminds us of God being present with us. Amen.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for the repentance, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. While I was home in Minnesota this past summer, I found myself getting drawn unexpectedly into my parents' um, habit of watching birds in our backyard. As I sat at the kitchen table with them eating meals, I found myself really surprised how entertaining it was to watch the antics of finches and woodpeckers and robins and blue jays and all sorts of different birds um, darting around the feeders outside the window. I even learned about some birds I had never heard of before. For instance, the cat bird, who likes to hang out in the shrubs off to the side and has this kind of weird meowing sort of bird call that it gives. Um, but my favorite visitors of the summer were this pair of doves, and they um, had these striking light gray feather coats and long distinguished necks with these kind of uh, sporty little black collars on their necks. Uh, we later identified them as Eurasian collared doves using my parents' little bird guide. Um, they seemed to have settled in really comfortably to our neighborhood, and they'd often stop by for breakfast always together. Um, our gospel reading this week got me thinking about birds, reading about how the Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. And isn't it interesting how we always seem to use birds as symbols for what's happening in our world? We do it all the time um, in ways both literal and metaphorical. So, for example, when you see the Canadian geese flying south, we know that winter is coming. Circling vultures are a sign that something has probably died recently. And um, when the stork brings a delivery, we know that there's probably a baby on the way. Remember, I said metaphorically. Um, looking for meaning in the presence of birds isn't a new phenomenon. I personally learned something new this week at Monday Coffee. Have you ever heard of the legend of the ravens that live at the Tower of London? So apparently, there have been ravens that nest in the Tower of London for a long time. And at one point, the royal astronomer wanted to get rid of them. But the king was warned that if the ravens ever left the tower the kingdom would fall. And so, to this day, there are still ravens that nest in the Tower of London. Rewinding even farther back, apparently, the Romans were totally obsessed with interpreting birds as omens. They would look at the flight patterns of birds in the sky, or just the behavior of individual birds. Um, for example, there's this one story that talks about how this eagle descended onto the tent of Augustus when he was camped out at this battle site, and, um, and the eagle fought off two other ravens that were also around this tent. And, and the interpretation to the Romans of this omen was, was that Caesar, or excuse me, that Augustus would eventually defeat those two rivals of his and rise to the Roman throne as Caesar Augustus, the same Caesar Augustus who demanded a census be taken of the entire Roman world, sending a young Galilean family packing on their way to Bethlehem. Now, you might be wondering, 
why the fixation on birds this week. So well spotted. Um, as I read this passage in Mark, it seems like such a simple story with hardly any embellishment. John is in the wilderness. Jesus shows up, is baptized by John. The Spirit descends like a dove, and a voice from the heavens declares God's favor. The author of this gospel wastes precious few words interpreting these events for us, opting to show rather than tell us about Jesus. And this is Jesus' first appearance, his introduction of sorts in the oldest and earliest of the gospels. So I can't help but wonder, why a dove? What is significant about the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus, like a dove specifically? You see, during the time of Jesus, just like today, doves held symbolic meaning. Like today, doves were a symbol of peace, but during this time, they were also associated with gentleness and sacrifice. It was well known in the Roman Empire that the people of Palestine and Israel raised doves and pigeons. There was an entire industry around it. These were birds that were used as offerings in the temple, including by Jesus' own parents in the Gospel of Luke when they present Jesus in the temple. Because of this, doves were associated with righteousness and forgiveness. They were sacrificial animals, clean, nonviolent, pure. Doves were um, often contrasted with eagles. Just like we understand lots of animals in pairs of opposites, think lambs and wolves, elephants and donkeys, dogs and cats. Jesus, in Jesus' day, doves were often pitted against eagles. Eagles are predators. They represent aggression, conquering power. What was at the front of a Roman legion? An eagle. What did Herod fix onto the gate above the temple of Jerusalem to show Rome's dominance? A golden eagle. Eagles represented the unquestioned might of the Roman military and the imperial ideology. Doves, on the other hand, represented peace, sacrifice, and forgiveness. So it is significant that the Holy Spirit chooses to reveal herself as a dove in this opening act of the Gospel of Mark. As Jesus is baptized by John in the presence of the triune God, the Spirit has something to say about just what sort of powerful one has arrived. Because we live in a world obsessed with power. We all know what the world recognizes as power. Here in America, power means money, winning elections, influence, and I'll let you finish the list as you, you know how to. Um, and wow, I know it's easy for me to get caught up in obsessing over the sort of power that the world values, identifying with the eagle of domination and victory. But we serve a different God. The Holy Spirit reveals herself like a dove descending on Jesus. The Spirit reveals that this is one whose power is much different than the sort of power embodied by Rome. The Spirit reveals that Jesus' power is characterized by peace and righteousness, exercised not through conquest and dominance, but by the forgiveness of sins, the healing and feeding of the sick and hungry, and in self-giving sacrificial love. And Jesus is a powerful one, but maybe not in the way the world recognizes power. In this deceptively simple story, we learn something about the sort of powerful one we worship in Jesus of Nazareth. Unlike Caesar's story, in which an eagle descends on the tent of Augustus and predicts his rise to power, the power of the eagle, unquestioned military and ideological might, the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove, also predicting the rise of a powerful one, the Son of God, who will conquer sin and death after 
being executed on a cross by the might of the Roman eagle, rising again victorious to demonstrate his love for all creation. This is how the Spirit reveals Christ to us when she descends upon him like a dove. Today, as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord and also remember our own baptism in which we receive the same Spirit that descended on Jesus, we celebrate this abiding presence of the Spirit and the saving, sustaining power of Christ that brings to each of us forgiveness, salvation, and peace. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church and church leaders throughout the world that, guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the waters of the earth, for the seas, the lakes, the rivers, for the wells and aquifers that provide drinking water, and for the water that is piped into our homes, that God provide clean and nourishing water for all living things. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. God. For our nation and our leaders, 
for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to love our brother and to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For all who are in trouble, want, or sickness, for the countless who are suffering with COVID-19, for medical workers, for people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely, especially Michelle Clemens, Cindy Rich, and Gilbert Hernandez. Bless those we now name aloud and remember silently in our hearts. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, especially George Cotts, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also in you. Share a sign of peace with those around you. Text someone right now, peace be with you. John, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Pastor Steve. Shelby, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace with you, Shelby. As we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, we recall our own baptismal calling by the Holy Spirit to live among God's faithful people, to hear God's word, proclaim the good news of God, to serve all people, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Your contributions to the ministry of Abiding Presence help empower this congregation to live out our baptismal calling in the world. Thank you for your continued generosity. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, a way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. And now may God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.